Hello and welcome back to the railway. As you can see we've got Trying Hornby's EM2 running here. And after seeing a picture on Flickr, I've decided to run it with the shell tank wagons I was using last week. In the picture taken by Steam Driver 12 in 1981, it shows a pair of blue EM1s with a rake of DOC tank wagons. A bit like the tank wagons we've got on the layout today. I'd always thought of the EM1s or the EM2s as being for passenger traffic on the Woodhead line. But Steam Driver 12 has a number of images showing these engines with different sorts of freight. I'll include a link in the description box so you can look for yourselves. It's well worth a look. We'll just let these run around for a while and then we'll bring her to a stop and we'll have a look at how we get the power to the overhead line and we'll also have a closer look at the locomotive itself. We'll just get these wagons back over the points and into the siding. And then we'll get the M2 back around through the points, just around the corner here to a stop. And then we'll have a look how we get the power to the overhead line via the power mast. Current is fed to the overhead wire by means of one of these catenary masts instead of a power clip. The current comes in here and passes up this copper strip to the spring clip which presses against the overhead wire. Current returns via this clip here which is on the return rail. So I'll put this down and turn on some power. There we can see the current passing through the mast. On page 9 of the instruction leaflet there's a great diagram that shows this. Just before we fit this for the demonstration, we'll just give it a quick clean with a glass fibre brush. That'll get us a good contact. And we'll also, we'll just clean under the rail. And just slide a piece of emery paper in, which I've cut nice and thin, and just pull it backwards and forwards. get a great contact now. Sadly, while I was just testing the fit of this before I filmed it, the spring clip has broken. So I will put some pins in another one. We'll just put the broken one to one side and that gives me an opportunity to show you the clip. And it has a TV suppressor fitted in, just like the original clip did. So we'll put the base in first. It's difficult to show. And then we'll slot on the power mast. So the copper base there that runs up the mast makes contact with the metal base and the power mast clip. And then this little white dropper wants to be facing down and the spring clip needs to sit above the catenary wire so it pushes down and makes contact. And it clips into place. When you put these locomotives on the track, it's important that the insulated side 
goes towards the power mast and this is indicated with an eye on the power bogey. We'll just pop her on the track. And then we'll connect up the temporary power supply. And we'll see how she runs. She's got a very growly sound, this locomotive. There you go. Just next to the power mast, we've got a regular mast. They both use the same drop link. These grip the wire just enough to hold it, allowing the skate to pass underneath and collect the current. Phase two catenary was available from 1961 to the early 1970s. It was available in a number of sets throughout its life and many of the items were available individually. Let's have a look at a catalogue page. Here in the 1961 catalogue we see how extensive the range is and this was for fitting to series three track and standard track. Following in 1962 with the introduction of Super 4 track, the bases were changed to accommodate this. And in 1965, the double track gantries arrived, but they were in green and not in white as shown in the catalogue. The AM2 is on the move again, on the way to pick up some coaches at the station. We'll come across the crossover to a gentle stop, and then we'll set the points. And we'll move her back across the points to pick up a rake of blue and grey coaches with a utility van. And then back out onto the line and we'll close the points behind her. And we'll just let that run round for a moment or two and then we'll get her on the outside line, on the incline and we'll bring her to a stop and have a closer look. And here she comes up the incline. And this is where the magnesium really comes into play and gives it that extra grip. The original model was available in 1961 and came in green with a grey roof. It's R number 351. It was also available as a completely knocked down kit with a variety of names available. Pandora and Aurora. This one's called Electra and also has the number E27000 and this dates this model between 1970 and 1971. Considering the body moulding comes from around 1961, the detail's excellent. There's tons of riveting around the edges of the panels and all of this roof detail around the pantographs is terrific. All this cabling are running along here. Both the pantographs are live and they're sprung. These are very delicate and they're often found broken when you buy these models. At both ends we have lights and they're painted white. And we've got metal buffers and the standard triangle decouplings. The other side of this model has different detailing. So we'll just turn it around and have a look. A little bit fiddly and we can hear the magnesium, the wheels sticking to the track. And we'll just put the pantographs back up. Has a dummy bogey at one end and the power bogey at the other end. And you can see this is the insulated side and the side we just looked at was the return side. And there are a number of vents running right along its length on this side. Sadly, I don't have the packaging for this model, but here's how she looked on page eight of the 1970 catalogue and her final appearance on page nine of the 1971 catalogue. This was the end of the line for the M2 as a model for Triang Hornby. 
and she never did make it through to the Hornby Railways period. And we'll have a quick look at the rake of coaches she's with at the moment. We've got the blue utility van from around 1968. This is R226. And then we have a couple of composites, Mark 1 composites, R727. They're available from 1966 to 71. And then we've got the Mark 1 brake on the end, R728 again. Available 1966 to 71. I've already uncoupled her, so we'll just put the pantographs down and we'll turn her over and have a look underneath. And there we can see we've got the motor bogey on one end, dummy bogey on the other end, no pickups at this end, and we've got the maghesion feel the screwdriver just sticking to the wheels and that gives it the extra grip on the incline so I think we'll turn her around and get her back on the track now it has to go insulated side on the inside of the track which is closest to the, the power mast otherwise it just won't run and you hear that click to the track we make sure the other end is on. Coupled back up. Pantographs up. And then we need a little power. And off she goes around the layout. And we'll get those coaches back round to the station on the inner line. I forgot to mention the motor bogey which is Triang's X213, initially developed for this locomotive, but then it was further developed to serve two other locomotives, R751, the English Electric, and R357, the Brush Type 2. The motor buggy then became X337. All that changed was the side frames are modified for these diesel locomotives. So we'll close the crossover, points number eight, and then open point number 11 and then we'll take her back into the station and what a terrific view between the blue and grey pullman and the intercity coaches right up to the buffer there she is all back in the siding we'll close point 11 and then we'll set the points to get the green em2 out we'll also need to put up the pantographs and then off she goes with the full parcels coach now I think we'll just watch her go and collect the rest of the maroon coaches and then we'll bring her around up onto the incline and we'll have a closer look at her along with the coaches. This is Triang's EM2 as she was first released. Catalogue number R351. The detailing on the body is the same as the blue one, but we do have it in this lovely BR green with the orange lining and this lovely, lovely crest here. Now there's a switch on the roof which I didn't mention with the blue one. So at the moment as it's set, it's set to take power from the overhead. And if we slide it all the way back, it will now take power from the track. So we'll just put that back and then we'll have a brief look at the coaches she's pulling. I think the EM2 in this livery looks very smart. And we'll just move along and have a look at the coaches. First off, we've got the parcels coach in maroon, and that's R425. 
and followed in that we've got the composite coach R422 and then we've got the buffet car R424 following on at the end we've got the brake coach R423 and we'll give her a little power now and get her back underway she does look very smart in this livery and I think on balance it's better looking than the blue version for me and with these maroon coaches which were available throughout the 1960s it's a very good looking set and she's such a smooth runner the blue one has such a growly motor I think the differences between the two motors is a subject for another day we'll bring her along the station here to a gentle stop and then we'll open up the points at the station and we'll bring out the blue AM2 as well and we'll see if we can get them both to run round together And I think that's about it for today. If you look in again next week, we'll have something else from the late Triangle Hornby period. Thank you for watching.